Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle, and I'm joined by my two co-hosts, Michael Hall and Michael Reed. What's up? I don't want you guys to... I'm sorry about the crusty sheet in the background. I don't want you guys to see my torture rack that's behind me <laughs> right. with all the weights on it again. And we're also joined by a very special guest, Matt Valdez, the best-looking junkie from 106.7 oh, The Fan. What's yeah. going on, Valdez? How are you doing? Mike, Mike, Kyle, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely, sir. So the reason why we have you on here, the Washington football team are facing the Ravens this weekend, and everyone knows that listens to 106 that you are a big Ravens mark. So let's go down the list. I've got a couple questions for you regarding right. the matchup. The Ravens had a disappointing loss um, earlier in the week to Kansas City. Do you think, do you expect a lull from the Ravens at all coming off of that loss? Well, it, it's kind of weird. It's been like, 16 weeks since they had a, a loss in the regular season. Mm -hmm. So you really have no idea how the team is kind of going to handle it. And obviously the coaches are, are going, you know, next week we got to focus on Washington. We got to focus on Haskins. We got to focus on, on the defense, but you really have no idea how the team is going to react on a game like that, because let's be honest, the game was circled on their calendars. Yeah. This was their litmus test for the AFC they thought that they were number one in the AFC and this was supposed to be their coming out party this was supposed to be how they showed the nation that they were the Chiefs and I'm not exactly sure how they're going to react to that because think about it they haven't had losses in the regular season last year as opposed to week three of the right. Cleveland you know, so how are they really going to handle it? Are they going through practice thinking about the Chiefs or are they going to be focused on the Washington football team? No one's really exactly sure how they're going to respond to it. Yeah, and you could say that this is a perfect trap game um, coming off of a big loss, emotional loss to Kansas City, and then Washington could be easily overlooked by the Baltimore Ravens where they didn't even have to do any homework on them. That being said, um, Valdez, I have to ask you, what Washington player, which Washington player, if they were to win the game against the Ravens, as far-fetched as that could possibly be, if they could win, if one player had to do well in order for them to win, who would you think that would be? Well, you say it's far-fetched, but I really don't think it's as far-fetched as you think mm. because the, the scenario that I, I kind of have in my head is how they have that Kansas City loss. Uh, trust me. It's not only the fans, it's, right. it's, it's the team. The team really had this game circled, and they got embarrassed on Monday night. Mm -hmm. And how are they going to respond to it? If, if they come out you know, sleepwalking through the first quarter, you know, and they're down 10 nothing, 14 nothing. We, we obviously see the Ravens can't come from behind. Right. So if, they, they, if, if the Washington football team can put up points in the first quarter and kind of catch them sleepwalking through that, then how are they going to respond? That being said, um, you know, how can they do it? Obviously, Chase Young being out is a huge, yeah. huge, huge hit. The, the uh, Ravens' offensive line is not as good as it was last right. year. And, and obviously, the Washington football team's defensive line, minus Chase Young, is still very, very good. Yeah. And I feel like if they get pressure on Lamar and pressure uh, uh, in the passing game to him, I feel like it can be a long day for him. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a, that's a lot that being said, because Lamar's stats, he's been sacked quite a bit uh, so far this season. And look, he's he's a big time runner and he likes to run the football. And there's a lot of cluster going around uh, with that running back room in Baltimore. So Valdez, if, if you could, who do you predict to be the number one running back? If you could say it's going to have the better stats on Sunday of the running back room in Baltimore, who's going to be that one uh, difference maker for them against the Washington football team? Well, if I was John Harbaugh, I'd be running Gus Edwards out mm. uh, so much because he, be, he he was gaining up to 10 yards of carry uh, in the Chiefs game. Ingram looks very slow in the backfield. He looks like, obviously, he had an injury heading into the playoffs last year, and it looks like it's just been lingering, and he just not does not look like the back from before. Um, and they've been kind of keeping Dobbins on the sideline, which I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, Harbaugh is kind of a veteran's coach. So he, if you're a rookie, you kind of have to earn your way into mm -hmm. the starting lineup. And I feel like Gus Edwards would get the bulk of the carries if Ingram is looking slow. Ingram's obviously going to start, but if Ingram is looking slow at first, then Gus is going to get the carries, then Dobbins after that. 
That And that makes a lot of sense. Gus Edwards is the one guy that has really been, uh, you could say, the most productive out of the bunch. He's looked really, really good thus yeah, far. He's a, he's a, he's a straight-down-the-field rusher, yeah. which kind of works in the offense that they're trying to do. They're, they're, they're not doing anything side-to-side. Side. He's the kind of guy that kind of just goes straight up the middle, hit a guy, then get kind of three more yards after that. Right. Uh, so last night, I'm sorry, Monday night, Lamar kind of had a dud for a game. I won't say kind of, he did have a dud for a game. Yes, um, he did. But as we've seen uh, in weeks past, especially with Kyler Murray, Washington really struggles against these mm-hmm. mobile quarterbacks. Do you think that he's really going to get the game going on the ground this week? Or, or do you think that he could just straight up beat him with his arm? Well, it all depends on what Del Rio wants to do, because there's a couple of ways to attack the Ravens when they're, uh, when they're on offense. If they want to kind of use what the Browns did in week one, which is kind of what the Chargers did in the playoffs and kind of what the Titans did in the playoffs where they just stack the box and kind of make him throw it. In week one, he looked very good. I mean, uh, his passing that week was was great. But if I'm a defensive coordinator, what I want to do is I want to make Lamar throw it. I want to make him beat me with his arm. And if he beats me with his arm, then great. You know, I feel like I, I picked the better of two poisons there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, that being said, let's, br- let's bring this back home. An- Mark Andrews had, look, Reed just said Lamar had a dud of a game. I think Mark Andrews had a bigger of a dud of a game. He was not, he just did not seem comfortable at all. Right. Do you expect him having a bounce back game against this Washington defense? Well, we all know that Washington has kind of a problem covering their, uh, covering tight ends. And so, Obviously, Andrews is is Lamar's kind of favorite target, and the wide receiving core for for the Ravens is kind of lackluster. Mm-hmm. So I kind of see Mark Andrews back, uh, bouncing back, maybe uh, definitely scoring a touchdown here. Yeah. Um, last week, if you look at the Chiefs game, um, in the red zone, the only touchdown pass that Lamar threw, Andrews was subbed out for Nick Boyle, the backup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So obviously, I don't know if he was nicked up or he just was not productive, but mm-hmm. – but I, I expect Andrews to kind of bounce back, especially with the way that Washington covers their tight ends. They kind of really have a problem with that. And I hope, as a Ravens fan, you would hopefully that you see him feast on, on the Redskins defense. Right, and uh, sticking with the offensive side of the ball, uh, gonna, kind of got a couple under overs for you if you want to answer those. Uh, do you think Lamar is going to have over or under four touchdowns total? Uh, total? Yeah. Um, I'm going to guess under. Uh, I'm going to say he might have one rushing and possibly two throwing, maybe one throwing. But if you gave me four, I would definitely say the under. Look, look, Lamar's season has been very lackluster as a Ravens fan. And if you look at it, uh, besides week one, uh, where he threw for 275 and two touchdowns, it's been very lackluster if you look at the Houston game where they really depended on the running game. And if, if the weakness is in Washington's defense, if, if they are running the ball very well, I expect them to stick to it this game because they kind of got off of it in the Chiefs game. And if they see that the, the running game is working for them, I expect them to stick with it. So you can kind of see a game manager type performance from Lamar uh, on Sunday. That's what I would expect. I would expect something along the lines of, of maybe – 50 yards rushing, 200 passing, maybe one rush TD, one throwing TD. Hmm. We hold him under 50 yards or under 100 yards rushing. I'll be happy with that, honestly. Yeah, Yeah, I think I think all Washington fans would be. Now, the Ravens, they look, they're not the best team in the NFL by any stretch. And we just learned that on Monday night. They have some weaknesses, Valdez. Can you kind of elaborate on some of those weaknesses for us? Yeah, I really think Monday night showed how uh yeah. kind of the the pimples on the ravens yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot of blemishes with this team um on the defensive side of the ball they really do not have much of a pass rush um they really do not get home with four or five guys um wink martindale don martindale wink is what what he's called in baltimore has to really dial up a lot of exotic blitzes in in order to get to the quarterback which is kind of frustrating because they franchise tag uh matthew judon mm. which is their which is their defensive end yep. and they're paying him 17 and a half million dollars a year he wanted 20 million dollars and he hasn't had a sack in the first three games yep. and so he's not gotten to the quarterback like everyone thought he would 
Jalen Ferguson predicted that he was going to have double digit sacks this year. He's without a sack. Um, Calais Campbell, although he's a good run stuffer, he has uh, long arms, can bat a lot of passes down. He hasn't really gotten to the quarterback. So really the pass rush for the Ravens has been kind of non-existent. Now I mm-hmm. think this week, uh, uh, Natabuke, who is their draft pick, is going to be active. So it'll be kind of interesting to see what he does in the middle of the of the line. And then, honestly, last weekend, a lot of people don't realize this, but their draft pick star linebacker Patrick Queen out of LSU, the first round pick, he was benched in the second half. He had for a, LJ Fort. He had a thirty point grade from PFF last week. Well, he was awful. Uh, um, and he got confused by a lot of motion. He was eaten up by a lot of the screen passes. Mm-hmm. And he was he looked really bad. So I, I so even though their secondary has two all pro cornerbacks, their pass rush is really non existent. So mm-hmm. if so if Washington football team's line can just really kind of stabilize a, a pass rush of four or five then I feel like Haskins could have a big day. Mm. Now, on the offensive side, last year, Marshall Yonda was their all-pro right guard and who retired. And I really feel like they're having an awful, awful, awful time uh, trying to replace him. They drafted this rookie, Ty Phillips. DJ Flukerton is somebody who they brought in, and Ty Phillips is starting over him. And Ty looks really good in the running game, but his pass protection is really, really bad. And mm. – or next to him is Orlando Brown. I really feel like Orlando Brown Jr. Uh, was was somebody that that leaned on Marshall Yonda a lot, uh, mm-hmm. being next to him. And then you add into the fact that uh, uh, Skura, their center, had a seizing end injury to his leg. He looks slow on the line. The, the line of the Ravens is not what it was last year. Right. And it is not as good as everyone thinks. And on paper, you look at all the skill positions. And yes, the Ravens have better skill positions than the Redskins. But it, down down in the trenches where the game is won, I feel like Washington might have an advantage over the Ravens. Wow. And, uh, <clears throat> you kind of hit on the cornerbacks and like kind of the secondary. It's pretty good uh, solid cornerbacks on the outside. Marlon Humphreys has got the big contract. Congratulations to him. Mm-hmm. But uh, obviously on the offensive side for the Washington football team, the one real threat is Terry McLaurin. So how do you see that matchup between Terry and Marlon going into Sunday? Well, it all depends on what uh, Wink wants to do with his defense. If Because last, uh, last week you saw kind of him blitzing the corners. And mm-hmm. then there was a lot of miscommunication when bringing the corners because who was going to pick up Tyreek Hill? Who was going to pick up Hardman? And if they kind of – I, if I was the defensive coordinator, I would kind of shadow, I would shadow McLaurin with Humphrey. Mm. Uh, uh, that's what I would do. That's their, obviously your best receiver. That's the Ravens' best uh, uh, cornerback. So I would obviously try and shadow him as much as possible. Right. Um, and I, I would try to play him uh, man as much as possible. The Ravens on their defense, they play a lot of man coverage. They don't play much zone. So, so if, you know, if, if you're running a lot of crossing routes, uh, that could be good for Terry. Uh, and then if you're able to stop the blitz and then you don't have any people over the top, then I feel like Terry's faster than Marlon, but Marlon's kind of savvy yeah. and he's kind of a bigger corner. So if he can bump him at the line, but if he doesn't get the bump, then Terry it could be cruising over the top. Right. So we, we know about both their cornerbacks, how they're both stars, Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey, as you just elaborated on. But how do you think that this past defense is fared after losing Earl Thomas to a devil's threesome this offseason? How do you guys, how do you, do you think that that's really kind of affected them as nobody's really stepped into that free safety role? I mean, obviously you can't replace Earl Thomas. No, but. Earl Earl's a savvy vet, a savvy vet, and so they replaced him with the Sean Elliott, right. uh, who was a lot faster than than Earl, and which was kind of a, a big bugaboo for the Ravens is that their safeties were not yeah, that fast, Chuck especially. Clark. Right. Yeah, Chuck's not that fast, and then before him, Tony Jefferson was not that fast, right. um, and Eric then Weddle. Earl was not. That, yeah, Weddle was not that fast, and then Earl Eddie was not White. that fast, but at least yeah. he knew where where he could diagnose right. a play a, lot, right. a little better. Right. Deshaun has that problem where he's not able to diagnose it as well as Earl, but he's a little quicker. Um, then you can tell with the last couple of games that he'd been bringing uh, Deshaun on the blitz a lot more. Um, but uh, 
it's kind of a weakness with with the Ravens, especially with faster teams at wideout. As over the top, they're not as fast. It's almost like they have two strong safeties, where mm-hmm. uh, they're better against the run than they are over the top. Right. And Washington fans know all about that. And and look, the there's going to be a renaissance here on Sunday. Robert Griffin III is making a way back down. He's going to face off against the Washington football team. Look, there's still fans of the Washington football team that love RG3. So do you think RG3, will there be a sighting of RG3? Uh, that's funny. I know RG3 is probably licking his lips in practice this week to get uh, back over to Landover and kind of <laughs> stick it to the Washington football right. team. But I actually think this game is going to be a lot closer than people think. And so I don't think where there's going to be an RG3 siding. Um, maybe in the last two minutes, three minutes. Um, but I don't think there's going to be an RG3 siding this week. Maybe in a Heisman package yeah, like the Ravens did say. against uh, the Bengals where they had Mark Ingram, Lamar mm-hmm. Jackson, and RG3 in the backfield. That's probably the only thing that I can imagine him getting into. But other than that, I really do not. I really do not see him hitting the field because I think this game is going to be a lot closer than people think. Uh, well, I agree with you. I do. I do. I truly do. Now that being, let's get your prediction for the game before we start getting into the good stuff, Valdez. Okay. All right. My prediction for the game is it's going to be twenty-six seventeen Ravens, and I think that mm. the, I think that the the narrative on Monday is going to be that if Chase Young played this game. It was going to be. It's going to be a lot closer than mm. what people think, because I really think the line uh, for the for the Ravens is not as good as what people said. And mm. then obviously the the line for the Washington football team is 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 playoff caliber. And I feel like if Chase Young would have played, it would have caused a lot of havoc, and it would have uh, caused problems for Orlando Brown Jr. Mm. And there would have been it would have been a lot closer than what people think. I think that's going to be the narrative on Monday. Now that that'd be a re- that's a really good prediction to be perfectly honest with you. And not many that people would expect. What they're like thirteen point um, favorites right now. The Ravens are over the Washington mm-hmm. Football Team. Let's rope this around to your job here, Valdez. Oh, you work for okay. one hundred six. You work on the Junkies. We listen to Junkies for years and years. The best story that you have of the Junkies that you possibly wouldn't be able to normally tell. Okay. Oh oh geez. Um, putting them on the spot. I know. Yeah, you're kind of putting me on the spot here. Um, the best story that I probably couldn't tell. Uh, there's a lot of poker open stories uh, that that are going to stay in the vault. Don't yes. worry about that. I'm not guys. trying to get anybody in trouble. Uh, yeah, they're not going to be in trouble. Um, the guys, it, you probably don't realize this, and this is probably a crappy story. Um, is that the guys are a lot more generous than you think. Um, they're, they're super supportive of Drab and myself. Mm. Um, you know, they get every year, they give us a a pretty hefty bonus, Mm. um, around Christmas because they really appreciate that the job we, the job we do and that, and that, you know, doesn't get talked about much. And Mm. obviously they don't talk about it on air, Right. but they, but they really appreciate it. And honestly, it pays for my Christmas and pays right. for my vacation <laughs> the next year. And so, and so the, the, the guys are very well off and they, they really, uh, they really uh, show their support financially uh, to drive it in myself. So yeah, you guys a do lot it. Of people, a lot of people don't, don't realize that, but they're very, yeah. very generous. I- Never would have expected that, but no. there you go. What so no, because I, because because all they do is beg for free stuff and they're <laughs> like, like they're cheap, but but around Christmas they're not cheap. I will say that. Well, that's, that's good. That's yeah, yeah, right. Oh, uh, oh, I have another one. Speaking of Christmas, so the drinking show not last year, two years ago, where okay. we did a uh, a bounty to see who had the uh, the highest blood alcohol oh, content BAC. All right. JP ripped shots right before the last BAC because he was so desperate for the $500. I stayed, I stayed in the studio until about three o'clock, four o'clock because he was throwing up, passed out um, from ripping shots that I had to nurse him back to health. And so, so my, so the day before my vacation, JP was puking on himself after the drinking show because he was so desperate for five hundred dollars. <laughs> it must have been, must have been worth it. No, no I felt, I felt like I was in college again. That's right. <laughs> so, 
uh, one, one person uh, me and Kyle have actually have a, a pretty decent relationship with. We've, we've been on his podcast a couple of times. Uh, do, how, do you miss AWOD at all? Oh, uh, <laughs> AWOD, AWOD is the, the, the stir in the drink. Yeah, I will okay. say that. Right. He's a yeah. uh, he's a integral part of the junkies. Um, he's he's a great guy. He doesn't. Re- what's weird is he's been working with us for three years and he still doesn't understand radio, which, <laughs> I, don't, which I completely don't understand because he's been working with a, a show that's been on for close to twenty five years. Right. But he still has zero radio instinct. But but at first he was kind of he kind of rubbed you the wrong way. Very ungrateful, but. At, towards the end of his radio career with the junkies he uh, he finally listened to us um he's still not funny we still had to write all of his stuff with him um but but uh, he finally got it towards the end and then he turned out to be a pretty good host and then i still listen to him on the weekends every now and then yeah yeah love a1 yeah a yeah, yeah. hilarious we were lucky enough cool. to be on with him yep. and brian and the rest of the guys um and that was okay. a lot of fun uh, I really appreciate you coming on, Valdez. And so I, before you go, though, I got to ask you one question. Your favorite junkie. My favorite <laughs> junkie. Uh, I get asked this a lot. Um, I always say that someone has character traits that they kind of line up with, with one of the guys, whether it's if you're, you know, uh, bombastic and uh, outlandish kind of like Eric or if you like to gamble like Jason or if you're kind of matter of fact like JP but my uh, my person that I, I definitely kind of vibe with the most is Cakes. Cakes kind of understands what I'm thinking a lot. We kind of have you kind of share the same brain um, with humor. That, yeah. yeah, especially with yeah. humor. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I wish you guys could hear some of the shows that kind of go on in the IFB, which means like in their ear hole, which doesn't go over the air. Mm. And so I kind of, I'm always talking to Cakes in his ear, making him laugh. If you're watching on TV, if you ever see him smirk when he really shouldn't be smirking, it's because I said something funny to him in his ear. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I got one last question. I got one last question because I always wanted to know this. Is Bickle really as clueless, clueless as he seems, like, on the show? Because, like, the dude acts like he knows nothing in life. <laughs> it's very weird. And it's, what's weird is that it's happened all of a sudden. And I don't, I don't understand what's been going on. But, yes. The, the short answer to that is yes. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he needs Adderall and he's ADD or what's going on, but you tell, it might be that, but if you tell him, you need some, you need some ginkgo biloba or something, yeah, but yeah, right. you tell him one thing and then he'll forget it literally 10 seconds later, which yeah. is weird. And then it makes me not want to get old. It's, it's the fire pit fumes. Real fast. Yeah. The fire pit fumes kind of goes to his head. Right. You know, my favorite junkie of all time. Who's that? Amy Winehouse. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You're, 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 you're doing an overdose zing. I see what you're no, doing. All right, all right, all right. Before you go, before you go, because we okay. all talk about it to ourselves, okay? Like I don't hate to be negative or anything. What the hell is JP's problem? <laughs> no, I actually I love JP because he's the one of the only people that listens to us, right? And actually takes what we say to heart and really tries when we give him constructive criticism. But honestly, he's just it's just one of those people where <laughs> he it's he kind of knows what he wants to do and yeah. then when he has an idea in his head where he wants to do something he's going to go do it right right you know that's yeah. kind of a trait with a lot of successful people yes but jp takes it kind of to the next level a little bit sometimes yeah absolutely that yeah. Ch- that chad dukes thing from a couple years ago was absolutely hilarious so oh my god but valdez i really appreciate you coming on brother i mean yes. i can't tell you how many times we've listened to you we you're one of the probably the funniest person on on the show not only the good the best looking one at that valdez oh, i really you. appreciate okay. you taking the time out and coming on with this brother love the man thank you guys sure. for having me absolutely yeah. sir and thank tell you, Kyle, thank, you, thank you mike thank you mike of course thank, thank, you. You. thank you we'll yeah. see you again valdez all right bye so that was good to have like a real Ravens fan on here yeah. who, who was completely realistic with his expectations. Not yeah. like Shook, who's out there like, we're going to beat you guys 75 to three. <laughs> RG3 is going to take over in the second quarter. Right. Which it's crazy. I can actually happen. see like both scenarios. Which I know. <laughs> I can see it happen either way. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And re we really do appreciate Valdez. But that yeah. being said, let's move on to the actual show. This episode is going to be called Destiny's Episode. There is a fan, uh, Destiny, who ha is a young girl who got diagnosed with cancer and actually had a very bad news um, two months ago that if the cancer rescinded back into her bones. And we heard last night that she had actually broken her femur. So on top of everything going on with her, she now has a broken leg. So Destiny, this episode is for you. We're making out to you. Um, and I hope that you get better quickly. I hope you're not in pain. And I hope it gets better very, very quickly, Destiny. We are with you. And shout out to the hog farmers always. Definitely, definitely. Yes. All right, so definitely. let's start talking about this episode coming up. We got to talk about the game on Sunday because I think Valdez gave us a lot of great bits from a kind of realistic aspect from a Ravens perspective because you talk to anybody nationally, oh, game over, going to be blown out right. of the water. Valdez is sitting here saying, no, as a Ravens fan, I could actually see them uh, making some waves here. What was your – I was actually very surprised that he yeah. reacted that way. Yeah, I mean uh... – it's funny that we were just talking about it on Tuesday for like a couple minutes, like these type of games right here where it's just like a lopsided kind of like matchup where obviously uh, Washington's outclassed by the opposing team. You kind of just seem like, oh, they have no chance. And all of a sudden they come out and put a little fight, put a little more effort into it. Maybe the other team has a couple slip ups. And next thing you know, it's fourth quarter, five minutes left. And somehow, some way we're either up or in the game, a.k.a. the Seahawks game with uh, Kirk Cousins a couple years back where everyone said, oh, they have no shot. They have no chance. We pulled it out somehow, some way. But uh, I definitely liked uh, his take on everything because, just like Reed said, he's actually like a realistic fan where he's like, I can see things going right. kind of a certain way, and it's kind of closer than people think. So, right. hey, I like this prediction. I mean, it was still a loss, which everyone expects anyway, but I'll take the prediction that he had. Yeah, absolutely. And the one part that I took away with it was about Patrick Queen, who's somebody that I scouted in the offseason I actually really liked. And I linked him to the Ravens because I did think that he fit perfectly. But there's a reason for that. And that's because Patrick Queen, I feel like he fits the Ray Lewis mold a more of your prototypical linebacker that fits the gaps and stops the run. He, he doesn't do well out in space. And that's exactly what Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs did to them on Monday night. I made m multiple notes about this. They spread them out. They made them thin and then threw the ball over the field, made Patrick Queen get out of that box, and it really exposed him in that Ravens defense. I think um, Valdez was 100% right with that. Um, with targeting Patrick Queen in the passing game. The only question is, can Dwayne and the passing game keep up with Lamar Jackson in their offense? Right. Yeah, you're, you're completely right. And uh, I, I was very surprised that he said that he thought that there was a chance that Dwayne could have a very good game. But with, with all you've been hearing about Dwayne over the last three weeks, it, it, for somebody else, for especially a Ravens fan who's actually experienced success and knows what winning quarterbacks have looked like over the last year or so um, for him to be able to say, especially against their stud cornerbacks, you know, they have two of the best cornerbacks. They have probably the best cornerback duo in the NFL for him to say that Haskins could really kind of exploit some of these matchups. That was a bit surprising, but he was right because it did make sense because the pass rush isn't going to be there because they are going to be man to man with Terry McLaurin. And, and you can't necessarily do that all game without giving up some big plays. So I, I really shout out to him. I really, really appreciated his point of view. Yeah, it, I was taken back by it because I was Same. expecting him to come on yeah. here with a big smirk the whole time. Say, we're going to run you guys out the building. No, yeah, that, right. that's not what he was uh, saying at all. Yeah. And I, I think he's 100% right. We just want to be included. There, there is, so there is a sort of lull to this because Valdez was 100% correct. There is, without it, there is no doubt that the Ravens circled that game on their calendar, and they yes. did not even look at the Washington football team. I could guarantee you that. Obviously, they have scouts looking at them. But, I mean, as a team, going into this weekend, it's a perfect trap game, in my opinion. The Washington football team could do very well, but it all comes down to one person, in my opinion, and that is Dwayne Haskins. Uh, his performance on Sunday, he doesn't need to be Pat Mahomes. He doesn't need to be throwing off one leg, throwing 60-yard dimes to McCall Hardman <laughs> downfield in stride. He doesn't need to do that stuff take care of the football, and move the ball downfield. I think the running game is probably the most important it's ever been this weekend. The Ravens last year got beat uh, by, because their running game was bad. They didn't have a good rush defense. In the offseason, they, they go out and get Calais Campbell, the perfect yeah. guy for that position. If the Washington football team are want to be able to pass the ball in this defense, they're going to have to be able to get the ball on the outside running with Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick so the play action can develop and they can attack downfield. Yeah, I was listening to uh, Gray and Danny <clears throat> earlier in the 
morning, like early morning, late afternoon, whatever it was. And uh, they asked the question, what does the team need to do to kind of pull a win out on Sunday against the Ravens? And I went on Twitter and I pretty much said what you just said was – Sneak Pat it, Mahomes in? That too. Uh, put uh, Pat Mahomes in the Dwayne Haskins jersey, you know. <laughs> yeah. Change Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to. <laughs> nah, but it's all good. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, they got to beat him at their own game, which is run the ball down their throat, run, run, run the ball, kind of control the clock, keep Lamar and that offense off the field. And then, like you just said, when the shots are there, you can't play man-to-man on Terry all game. And right. Marcus Peters has been known to kind of look back at the quarterback Gamble. in coverage yep. and take gambles and – kind of jump routes that aren't really there on the double move. So if we can get some uh, play action going and actually take some shots down the field for the first maybe like time in like four weeks, you know, that'd be cool. Right. And uh, mm. we could definitely uh, put some points up. But as yeah. Valdez alluded to, we got to uh, protect the line. The line has to protect the wing from the blitz. Yeah. But, and, and I talked – sorry, Mike, uh, Reed, I'm going to let you go real quick. But I talked about this on Twitter. The um, the the Kansas City Chiefs offense is built in a way that can't – they they're just so much better than the Ravens because the Ravens – they, they're good at balanced football. When it's 0-0, that's where they really do better at. And when they're up, when they're yeah. down, that's when they're struggling. But they can't find a rhythm on offense because they don't want to run the ball three times because of time. So what? how can the Washington football team do it? Beginning of the game, they have to spread them out wide, then hit them in the middle of the field, get the ball downfield, generate points like Valdez said, get up early. So then – forcing Lamar to have to throw the football. Look, I, I know he could beat the football, the watch football team with his arm. I'm just yeah. saying that's the avenue that they have to go down in order to do it. Yeah, you're completely right. And to elaborate a little bit on what Hall was saying about with our offense, getting the ball to, what both of you guys said, to Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick. Antonio Gibson especially. So far this season, Antonio Gibson's averaging 4.52 yards per carry. Uh, among qualified running backs, he's number four in PFF rush grade and number seven in rushing DVOA. And listen to this. This one impressed me the most. He is tied with Josh Jacobs for the number one spot among running backs and broken tackles at 12, despite mm. having just 31 carries. Josh Jacobs mm. has 68. Mm. So that's you've got to get him involved more because the guy is, ma- is making plays. And then – with, with the cornerback situation, everybody looks at the Ravens cornerbacks and automatically sees that duo, and they're just like, no, Dwayne Haskins is not going to be able to pass the ball against them because you see Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters is, you're right, Hall. He likes to gamble. He's kind of like D'Angelo Hall in a way, where, where he he's going to yeah. try to go for the Hall pick. And, and, but, and then Marlon Humphrey has the worst number for, of all cornerbacks in the NFL. 44, 44 so just weird. does not look good on a cornerback. <laughs> no, Hall but he's I, up so good. Hall and I used to argue uh, about Marcus Peters because I, yeah. I would always talk about how he got hyped up because he had a bunch of interceptions early with the Kansas City Chiefs, and yeah. then that's it. What what he is is you are 100% right. He's an opportunistic corner. He he can create turnovers, but he does play lax. He can be beat. There is a, there is a yeah. way to beat um, right. uh, to beat Marcus Peters. Look, right now his pro football focus grade is a 51.2. Marlon Humphreys is a 67. Uh, Deshaun Elliott has a 52.7. And then Chuck Clark finishing with a 69.4. They, they can be beat. But look, yeah. we said that it, we said that with the Browns. We said the Browns secondary was yeah. terrible, but we didn't even get the ball downfield. Every time right. we did, it was an interception. So hopefully they could take advantage in this game. And like last, uh, unlike last game, I would like to see Dwayne take a shot deep early, very yeah. early. I want to surprise right. the Ravens. I think if they go deep with an AGG touchdown or Terry, I know Terry's on the injury report. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I, I would like to see that. I think that would take them by surprise. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So let's get into the Michael Lombardi quote, which <laughs> oh. took, took everyone. What, what were you laughing for? I said fucking. Uh, I just hate Michael Lombardi. I hate him. Right. So he was on Grand Danny yesterday on 106.7, and he has, he he said that Ron would lose the locker room possibly by standing by Dwayne Haskins. I have an issue with that. Hold. Let me get your opinion on Michael Lombardi. Do you believe him? Do you think he's? Do you think he's? Do you think he's guessing? Is this a fact, or is this something that can develop? Yeah. No. Nah, I think he's. I mean, he's been in locker room. He's been a GM, so he knows the in and outs of locker room and stuff like that. So I definitely think he's right. As of right now, I don't think that he's right. Like, if this, if Dwayne continues this type of play that he had on Sunday and he's turning the ball over two, three, four times a game, like three, four weeks down the line from now, and he's still trotting him out there every single week, then yes, I do believe that 
they're going to kind of not really lose trust and lose the locker room, but they're going to start kind of looking at Del Rio and Rivera, mostly Rivera because he's the head coach, but, you know, Del Rio's the interim guy. But they're going to start looking at the coaching staff kind of side-eyed, like, especially like we were just talking about on Tuesday, but the division is still up for grabs. We don't know how people's records are going to look three, four weeks from now, but if things keep developing like this and we're still in the race for the division, they're definitely going to start putting their eyebrows up looking at them like, hmm. we're still in this. Can we, like, get hmm. a couple of offense generated? So as far as right now, I don't think he's right, but if this keeps developing and Dwayne keeps playing bad, then I think that some rumbles could happen. But, again, this is Ron Rivera, and people know he's a kind of a no BS kind of guy, so – I'm I'm 50-50 on it. Yeah, look, and the way that I interpreted it was that this was being said as fact, that this is happening. That's the way I interpreted it. Now, what's being conveyed now is through the the cracks and everything is that, no, no, he's saying that it can happen. So this offseason in particular – not much news got leaked out of this organization. I find it I find it very hard to believe that Michael Lombardi got a snip from the Washington football team saying that Ron Rivera could possibly lose the locker room later on. I don't believe that. And no, at the same time, to- Adam Schefter, bro, right. they wouldn't even leak that to you. And the same token, Dwayne Haskins uh, spoke yesterday, I believe, and talked about how players had rallied behind him, came up to him and talked to him, and said they believe in him and everything. If I'm going to believe anybody in this circumstance, I'm going to believe Dwayne. Dwayne's in the building. Dwayne's there every single day talking to these players. I, I don't believe Michael Lombardi at all. I Look, could that happen? Absolutely right. Allu- uh, like Mike Hall had alluded to. If, if his play from uh, – Dwayne's play from Sunday from against the Browns continues, I could easily sing that because any right-minded person would be like, what are we doing here, dude? We got to move on. But at the same time, I'm, I just don't believe it, to be perfectly honest with you. Right. And I, I do think it also depends on the situation. I think if, if they are still in this position where this division's so bad and they still have a chance to make some noise and make the playoffs. And I think, yeah, they would be like, well, dude, come on, what are you doing? He's playing this bad. And like, we could easily right. admit, let's switch some things up. Let's get something going. But I mean, that, that's if they are even in that position, but Kyle, I'm kind of like you were like, when he said that, I took that as he had heard this and yes. that this was already happening and it was going to, and bad and right. i was immediately like dude you just completely made that up not yeah. made it up but you heard something that could possibly happen and then it's a just, guess oh, that'll make a headline all right cool exactly uh, but yeah i mean i think we kind of talked about it on the last show uh, with where ron kind of got to just trust in ron ron his tune has changed a little bit and, and i think he has talked to maybe some of the guys and it really just depends on how the season's going like like if you're getting your ass whooped every game and it's Dwayne's playing bad then uh, but you still could be in the game I don't know like it, it's weird if you have a chance to be in the game and it's all because of Dwayne get him out you know yeah, I would yeah. understand but if, if you're losing pretty bad I think some of the guys understand that Dwayne's a very young raw player and might need a little bit of experience before you can be where they want yeah, yeah. If, he's, if he's just maintaining like he did on like the first two weeks pretty much right. he's not really turning the yeah ball there's no there. issue at all Exactly, right. but if he's, like you said, if he's the one losing the game for the team, then it's time to, all right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the blatant inaccuracies, it's the stupid mistakes, very stupid mistakes that cannot continue to happen as the quarterback of the Washington football team. Now, before we get into um, kind of our feeling with the overall game itself, let's go over some things that have happened at practice. Ron Rivera has not been at practice for the past two days. Uh, he is still, you know, he's got to take a recovery, did he? He's going through some stuff. Sadiq Charles practiced in full today, so he looks like he's ready to go. Chase Young was on a bike. So, look, it's doubtful that he's going to play against the Ravens, but there's still a chance he really wanted to sack Lamar Jackson, everybody. Remember that. That was the one person he wanted to sack. I have a feeling he's going to really try really hard to play this game. Cole Holcomb um, is practicing again. And then Terry was listed as an injury report on the injury report today. I think that's just like a, a – just to give him a rest day because he's not really a vet. But I think they, they would just give him a rest day uh, in well, that aspect. Steven Sims hasn't practiced yeah, for two, two days. days right? has, two days yeah. has not been a practice. So, so Isaiah Wright should be a bit – I was about a big to say, if, if, if Steven Sims can't go, then you would have to imagine that they're going to be going with Isaiah Wright there. Right. I like what he did on Sunday. He, uh, yeah. he had, like, what, four or five catches for 39 yards or something like that. Yeah. So he was getting moving the chains when we needed it. So uh, if he gets to step in for Sims, I'm okay with that. Right. And uh, we were just talking about Dwayne Haskins and, talk, and oh. speaking of 
One second. Dad's got to step away for a second. Oh, okay. I was just about to go into the quotes of uh, Dwayne Haskins, or Jack the Real, that Reed has right as he gets up. Right. But <laughs> let's uh, let's switch this around, okay, uh, Hall? L- you know, we saw the debate, the presidential debate last night, right? What 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 is one way you could say that it went right? It was a shit show, okay? Uh, to say the least, yes. Right. So in, heading into the NFL this weekend. What do you think is going to be this ver- th- this week's version of the shit show we saw last night, a.k.a. the game last Sunday, the Philadelphia Eagles tying the Cincinnati Bengals? Uh, I'm actually going to stick with the game that's going to be starting in the next hour and a couple minutes. The poopy, poopy Broncos oh, okay. against the poopy, poopy, even poopier New York Jets. I think that this is going to be one of those kind of poopy, crappy Thursday night games that's on the schedule where you're just like, why is this on TV? Uh, I think that both of these offenses, minus maybe like Melvin Gordon and uh, I don't know, maybe like a wide receiver on the Broncos here or there. Jameson Crowder's in the game too. He can make a play here and there. Hmm. If but, he uh, plays. No, nah, he's playing. They said he's playing. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, I just think that this is both these offenses are pretty bad. Uh, Brett Rippey and Thurston quarterback going to be getting the start for the Broncos. Uh, these defenses are nothing to be desired over with Von Miller being out. Uh, they lost Derek Wolf to the Ravens. Chris Harris is on the San Diego Chargers now, or Los, or Los Angeles Chargers now. So uh, they definitely lost a lot of defensive pieces. I know Bradley Chubb is still there. Mm-hmm. Just can't do it all by himself. Yep. So I just think that I'm, I'm going to watch the game because I'm a football fan, but I just think that could be the, uh, the debate the stinker game of the week, if you want to call it that. Nah, I like I like the the stinker game of the week. I, I like that one. That's a really good <laughs> one. But let's let's. I know we just switched it up just a little bit, but let's bring this back. Let's start doing some actual predictions and breakdown of this game. And I I think I've overinflated this football team just a little bit. Uh, whenever my my past predictions, but I got I got to humble myself a little bit with these predictions. Uh, we haven't been far off, but it's just the points scored. I think is the issue here. So. Heading into the weekend, Hall, right, the, pa- the, the passing yards for the Washington football team, what do you think they're going to have? Um, I'm actually going to ride the Valdez train here, and I'm going to go to Dwayne has a bounce back week after all the criticisms after his worst career game as an NFL quarterback. And I'll go Dwayne throws for two – I'll give him 245. Okay. And – Two touchdowns and a pick. I like that a lot. I think, yeah, I think 250 is the mark. That's what I just wrote down, too. Okay. Um, I do think that because the Ravens, look, I know that their stats are kind of inflated because they just got beat pretty bad by the Chiefs, especially with how much they were throwing through the air. So those stats are inflated uh, for the Chiefs. But they are susceptible against the pass. They are one of the worst. And so it wouldn't surprise me to see – Dwayne um, having to fight back in this game a little bit and having to throw the ball around and getting 250 pass yards. I think that's a solid prediction for the Washington football team on Sunday. What about you, Reed? What? Prediction for pass yards. <laughs> for who? Dwayne. Dwayne. I'm just kidding. For Washington. <laughs> yeah, no, what is, so what has everybody said so far? I don't want to take your guys' answers. Uh, he had, had 245. 250? I had 250. Okay, so I'm going to say 247.5. Okay. <laughs> 247. No, no, no. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go about uh, 220 or so. You know, I, I just Dwayne is just so far he's struggling, and but that could still be enough to get it done. I, okay. I mean, as long as he plays mistake free football and they get the running game going a little bit, he doesn't have to go light up the light up the world. You know, I mean, it's still a very good pass defense. It's still a very good defense. A very talented team. So I, I would say about 220. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Ravens are a very Throughout their inception, ever since they created the franchise, they were just born to stop the run. It just seems yeah. like nobody can run the ball against them. So, Reed, I'm going to stick it with you. What is your predictions for the Washington football team? How many rushing yards will they have? That's that's really going to be tough. It, it, it's, especially if Dwayne can't get going, then it's going to be, all right, cool, we'll just stop your guys' running game if you guys can't do anything about it. So it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, Calais Campbell's – always been one of the best defensive linemen against the run in the NFL. Um, total team rushing yards. Uh, honestly, I, I'm going to say something around 78 or so. Mm. Like, I, I don't think it's going to be anything spectacular mm. at all. Um, so I, I'm still expecting us to lose. This is the first time I'm picking us to lose this year. So, yeah. <laughs> What about you, Hall? What's your prediction for rushing yards? 
Yeah, uh, I feel the same way. It's just, uh, like I just said before, they added Derek Wolf, They added Calais Campbell, two very good run-stopping linemen. Patrick Queen's a very good run-stopping linebacker. So I'm actually going to reverse the numbers that Reed said. I'm going to go with 87. Oh, I'm going with 85. I think 85 is a good number. Um, J.D. McKissick hopefully gets some more uh, touches in the run game. He's predominantly been in the passing game, but he has looked pretty good. And Antonio yeah. Gibson has gotten some touchdowns lately. Hopefully he continues with that. Now let's move on with sacks. I'm going to predict four sacks. The Baltimore Ravens have given up some sacks, and I think that Lamar Jackson, the way that he plays quarterback, there is a good opportunity for the Washington football team to get one. I think Tim Settle might actually surprise some people this weekend. Jonathan Allen is having a career year in pressures. I think Nick Acre Nick Acreage, who we just had on from Pro Football Focus on Tuesday, put out that Jonathan Allen's having a career year thus far with nine pressures so far on the quarterback. I think that trend is going to continue this weekend. I, I'm predicting four sacks for the team. Yeah, uh, Valdez kind of laid out the offensive line for us. Uh, he said uh, the kind of really weak up the middle, which leads to your point about Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne. Definitely going to miss Matt I-90s, but I think Tim Settle can step in. I'm going to go just a tick under what you said. I think it will go three and a half just because Lamar is just such a athletic guy, such an athlete, so like kind of uh, maneuvering in the pocket that I think he gets out of a lot of sacks that could possibly be there, but – I think three and a half is pretty solid. Yeah. But I thought that we would get a good amount of sacks against the Cardinals with Kyler Murray because he's that athletic type of type of quarterback who could get outside of the pocket and Chase Young and Montez Sweat would feast on that. And with Chase Young against a bet worse O line that didn't happen. So uh, I'm I'm gonna go with two, but I'm gonna make another bold prediction here though. Okay. With one of those two sacks, Lamar Jackson is gonna tear his ACL and I'm gonna text Shook and I'm and I'm gonna say, Look, Shook look what happened this is because of you and then rg3 comes in and wins them the game <laughs> honestly that's horrible. probably that's not even a bold prediction looking at that field from past games you know oh yeah we're playing in fedex aren't we yeah we are yeah, playing then FedEx. i think that the chances are lower that he's not going to tear his ACL. <laughs> right. like uh overall predictions for the game score hall uh Again, I'm going to ride the Valdez train. I think I said it earlier in the week, and I actually kind of do believe that this is one of those games where mm. everyone just predicts us to get blown out of the water. And I think that we'll get blown out of the water late. Not really blown out of the water. I think the Ravens will push away late into the game, like fourth quarter-wise. But I'll go – what's the spread? 13 and a half? Uh, I'll go 20 – no, I'll go 30 for the Ravens. 20 for the Redskins. <laughs> I have I have 27-17 Ravens. I just don't think that this offense has enough to be able to keep up with this team. That being said, I could I could be very wrong because I was there in 2012 against the Ravens at FedEx Field. This Washington team always plays the Ravens well at FedEx. And I could just see that being one of those games where like the Ravens are just off. They're just not with it. And the Washington football team getting a pick here uh, here or there, somehow winning this game. But if it goes the way we think it goes, without any barring any crazy circumstances, I think 27-17, I just think they're too talented to um, uh, to lose against Washington, unfortunately. Yeah, I was going to go with 31-20, to but Hall went 30-20, to and I don't want to be that close. So once again, Hall, thank you for cheating off of my paper. Um, <laughs> I am going to go with... 34 to 23 the Baltimore Ravens will come out with a loss. I'm just going to come out with a W. Uh, and yeah, like you said, even if it is a decent game and we, I think it'll be another, we start kind of slow and then we pick up some of these points in garbage time towards the end, but Baltimore's just too talented right now to lose. But at the same time, I could see it being a trap game where we played them very well. They're down off themselves. They didn't really look forward to us or take us as seriously as they should have after Kansas city and we come out and we play very well. I mean, this football team should be pretty fired up with the embarrassment that happened last, the last couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah, they definitely should because that was, uh, that, you know, they were, that was a pedestal game. They were kind of see where they were on the radar with, with Kansas city. And obviously it got proven that Kansas city is just 
on a different level. But I, I really hope they're not pissed off and they're coming into this game trying to prove a point because it's Man. that would be really, really ugly. Let's hope to say the least. Lamar's not coming out there to prove that he's the best quarterback in the NFL and light us up for <laughs> yeah, 700 yeah, yards and <laughs> 10 like touchdowns. Miami. Yeah. Like Miami week one last God, year. God, last, last year that was – terrifying yeah i will say i was um i was felt better after Dwayne haskins recent comments after his uh twitter his social media post on sunday he talked to reporters recently and talked about how he he stays off social media which doesn't really make sense he was just on social media the other day um about that instagram <laughs> post i don't really get it but i'm glad that he's finally getting that tune and realizing it um and i like that he's finally kind of getting it that he hasn't done anything. He, he's not on some sort of pedestal above everyone else. He's got to elevate his play and do well. I'm glad that he turned the tide there, you could say, because um, the way that he has an opportunity here. There, you have to imagine, like, in this circumstance, he has two different projections. Like, this could be the beginning of a Hall of Fame career, or this could be the beginning of a Ryan Leaf type of career. And this game in particular could – is really the difference maker in my opinion. If Dwayne said it has to be against the Ravens. If if Dwayne comes out and lights the Ravens on fire and actually gains some right. confidence, there's a good chance that he could really elevate his play for the rest of the season in my opinion. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, these types 100%. of things happens. And right. happen and then or uh, he could come out against the Ravens, throw three picks again, completely throw the game away 40 to 20 and everyone and he's possibly being benched by yeah. week 5. Yeah, and look, let's hope that it, uh, Maybe Haskins was just riding a little bit too highly on himself after this offseason where everybody was just giving him credit. And we all – that's all we talked about was how well he was doing, how much he was impressing us, you know, losing all this weight. He looked good. He was doing all the right things. And, and maybe he was just getting a little bit – then he's named captain. Maybe he's just a little bit too high on himself, kind of got brought down to earth, and now he's kind of got to get leveled, centered, and then maybe he can start building. So I hope so. I hope you're right. I hope he's kind of turning the corner here. Yeah. I mean, like you said, this could be one of those games where not even just like a, uh, a season turning game for him, a season turning game for this whole team where everyone's kind of just counting us out and really not uh, running a rebuilding year, which we kind of are, honestly, but kind of just like they've gotten to just put us third or fourth in the division, top five pick next year. All of a sudden, a win over a <clears throat> top two, three team in the league like the Ravens gives his team, the whole team, a bunch of confidence, even more confidence than they already have with Ron Rivera there. And next thing you know, we rip off a couple wins, and we're top of the East, even farther than we already are. Yeah. And look, I just I just want to say, because on Twitter, I have been, and on here, I've blasted Dwayne all week long. All week long. But I just want to tell you, it's because I think he can do it. That's why. If, if I really generally did not want Dwayne to do well, I'd be celebrating his game from last weekend. Right. I was pissed off because I know he could play better. He should be playing better. That's why I'm pissed. I, I just feel like everyone that has, like, whenever see something negative about Dwayne, it's, oh, you're a hater. You're No, dude. Yeah, no. <laughs> why, why can't I just be upset with the way he's playing? You're why allowed to be critical right. of, of a quarterback of your favorite like team. Yeah, he played bad. And, and anybody who says otherwise is, if anything, you're just delusional. Like, yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah, Call I, a spade a spade. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that was said because I just don't want it to be this whole negative thing. It's just I want you to play. It, dude, I'll tell you right now is when you're playing better, you will not have a bigger fan. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. And it's just yeah. like the, the comments afterwards with social media. It's just like the whole not, – not I won't say attitude, but it's like the, the whole perspective that he's pushing. It's not like what you want to see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, in, no, like right. you know, like with Darnold, you know, Darnold says, you know, I have to play better. I have to be a professional. Where yeah. then when Dwayne comes out and says, you know, uh, we all have to play better, myself included. Well, uh, yeah. of course, you just said we. You don't have to say right. yourself included. Yeah. And that was – Darnold literally took it as far as I didn't play like an NFL quarterback. Like, right. I didn't play like I deserved to be in the NFL. And Dwayne, the way he took it, did kind of rub you wrong. And I think that's just Dwayne. I think that's just kind of how he is. He's kind of – Right, may come back a little, may come across a little arrogant, and he is probably uh, a little Dre so, Schrader, you know. Yeah, you know, maybe he's got to tone it down a notch, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but Sam Darnold looks like the uh, Lego. Yeah, he does. <laughs> have, have, have you seen that meme that said that? Looks that like is the Lego so funny. <laughs> I have never thought of that before. There's and one that says that he looks like uh, he looks like funny. a <laughs> like a Lego fireman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's 
watch you read every and, time. Dude, and earlier when you said uh, RJ3 was going to come out licking his chops, I was about to be like, I think you mean his eyeballs because Kekos lick their eyes because <laughs> he's got his eyes are so far apart. Dude, he looks like a lizard. I've always said that. He, he does, does he look looks like, like a lizard. Yeah, he looks like the lizards from like Donkey Kong. Little crocodiles. Yeah, yeah. Or like, or like Drango. Is that its name? The one that Johnny Depp voiced? I don't remember its name, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, a lot of respect uh, out to Nathan Coleman, who was supposed to join us tonight, but I screwed up the times. He's going to be joining us on Sunday for the post game reaction pod to the Baltimore game. So make sure you guys check us out then, okay? And always go like and subscribe us on YouTube, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Google Pods, um, Twitter, Instagram. We are all over that stratosphere. All right, everybody. And uh, first thing I want to say is, um, Destiny, please get better quickly. I hope yes. everything is okay. I'm sorry to hear the situation that, that she's in. If you guys want, go please and uh, go hit up the hog farmers if you want to uh, donate in any sort of way. Try to help Destiny or talk. I don't know. Send letters. I don't know. But just anything possible, reach out to hog farmers. They'll, they'll get you into contact. They have all the contact there. All right, everybody. I'm Kyle. I'm Hall. And I'm Reed. And I just saved a bunch of money on my car insurance by switching to I don't have a goddamn car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Washington football. Whee!